clavicle fractures. In clavicle fractures, you want to know a little bit about the ligaments that support the clavicle. They call them the CC ligaments or the crococlavicular ligaments. There are two ligaments. The conoid, which is medial, about four and a half centimeter from the end of the clavicle, and the trapezoid, which is lateral, about three centimeters from the end of the clavicle. These are the primary stabilizer to superior vertical translation of the distal clavicle. Here you can see the insertion of these ligaments on the inferior surface of the clavicle. Where the fracture occurs in the clavicle, you can see that the mid shaft, about 80 to 85 percent, the medial clavicle occurs in about 5 percent. It's usually rare and treated non operatively, and the fracture is usually stable. The lateral clavicle fracture occurs in about 10 to 15 percent. Near classified the lateral clavicle fractures into three types based on the integrity of the CC ligament complex and the involvement of the AC joint. Type 1, that the conoid and trapezoid ligaments are intact to the medial fragment. So the fracture is lateral to the ligament and the medial fragment is stable because it's supported by the ligaments. Type 2, the medial fragment is not supported by ligaments. Either the ligaments are torn or the fracture goes medial to the ligaments. The lateral fragment may have the ligaments completely or partially or no ligaments at all. But it is the medial fragment that's important that doesn't have ligaments, therefore it displaces superiorly. Lateral clavicle fractures are a different breed. This is the fracture that is displaced and the CC ligament is detached from the proximal fragment. And type 2 is the least stable and has the highest risk of non-union. So there is a high risk of non-union, but this non-union may not be symptomatic. You got to consider surgery for displaced type 2 fracture of the lateral third of the clavicle. How about type 3? The fracture extends into the AC joint. So what is the typical deformity that occurs in clavicle fractures? The sternocleidomastoid muscle pulls the medial fragment superiorly. The pectoralis and the gravity, or the weight of the arm, will pull the lateral fragment inferiorly. Examination of the patient. You're going to check for deformity. You're going to check for tinting of the skin because it might be an impending open fracture. Watch for distracted clavicle. You may have scabulothoracic dissociation. You're going to check for the neurovascular deficit. Examine for brachial plexus injury. Just be aware that the neurovascular bundle is very close to the clavicle. The subclavian artery is about one centimeter from the clavicle. How about the x-rays? So you're going to get an x-ray of both shoulders to measure the shortening. It is a bilateral panoramic views of both shoulders and measure both clavicles and see the amount of shortening. I usually get an AP and 20 degree cephalad upshot view of the shoulder especially in the operating room. In the x-rays, you're going to look for shortening, you're going to look for displacement, you're going to look for comminution, you're going to look for the Z-type fracture. So what are the risk factors for non-union? Displacement and comminution. And if you are an older female, and is smoking. Another risk factor is fracture of the lateral third of the clavicle with displacement of the medial fragment. The non-union is up to 50%.
there are absolute indication for surgery, like an open fracture, like vascular injury, like the fragment is stinting the skin. And, but brachial plexus is not an absolute indication for surgery. So what is the treatment of clavicle fracture? Most clavicle fractures can be treated without surgery. Clavicle fractures ends by healing in most patients with undisplaced fractures. It's really difficult to reduce and maintain reduction. Healing will occur despite the degree of displacement. If the fracture is significantly displaced, then you have a higher incidence of non-union. This displaced fracture can cause significant persistent weakness and disability, even if they heal. Non-operative treatment is used for minimally or non-displaced fractures of the clavicle. So in the undisplaced fracture, you will treat them by a sling or by figure eight a strap, and you remove the sling and they start range of motion in a few weeks, and the patient probably will heal and end by a small bump, which is the callus of healing. The sling is not a bad option for treatment of clavicle fracture. There is no difference between a simple sling and figure eight strap. Movement of the shoulder, even early movement of the shoulder, is not a risk factor for non-union of the clavicle. How about the relative indication for surgery? A comminuted fracture, a segmental fracture, a Z fracture, a fracture shortening more than 2 cm, or the fracture is displaced more than 100%. Non-operative treatment in these cases will lead to decreased endurance and the strength, but the range of motion will be the same in both groups, the operative and non-operative. So what is the hardware or the implant you're going to use for fixation of clavicle fractures? Plates are used in two techniques. You can use superior plate fixation or you can use anteroinferior inferior plate fixation. Usually surgery is not as easy as you think and it will start by defining where is the AC joint and whatever you can get good x-rays in the operating room or not. Want to make sure the surgery, you will treat a displaced, healthy, young, active person between the age of 16 to 60. The superior plate fixation of clavicle fractures. You don't have to take the deltoid. It has a mechanical advantage being on the tension surface especially in non-unions, but be careful when you drill through the inferior border of the clavicle. You may cause neurovascular injury. Also be careful about inserting the depth gauge. Usually the hardware is felt by the patient. Anteroinferior inferior plate fixation. The anterior inferior plate have the advantage of using longer screws will have a safe screw trajectory and less hardware prominence, but it has the disadvantage of dissecting the deltoid. Interior inferior plate may be better tolerated by the patient, especially the patient that carry loads in the shoulders or wear a backpack. Each one of them had its own advantage. It is better to use a contoured plate. I use superior plate fixation and I use plates that have locking screw capabilities. About 30% of the plates of the clavicles are removed. Another technique is intermediary screw or nail fixation through the clavicle, but watch out for migration of this hardware. The hook plate is also used in a very distal fractures. You can also use a small fragment plate fixation with possible CC ligament reconstruction in a very distal fractures. Sometimes you use lag screws, the neutralization plate for fracture stabilization 
with three screws per segment. After you finish, you're going to close the wound in two layers. You will give the patient a sling for comfort. You're going to avoid contact spots for about three months and removal of the plate for about a year. Complication of clavicle fracture and its treatment. The main complications are non-union and malunion. We will address them in details in other videos. What is the complication that can result from fixation of the clavicle? Number one, symptomatic hardware. This is the most common complication that we need reoperation. The second one, the infraclavicular numbness, which is probably the most common complication due to injury of the supraclavicular nerve. There are three branches and you need to spare them, the medial and the lateral and the intermediate. They fan out to cover the entire clavicle subcutaneous surface. And if you injure them, you get chest wall numbness below the incision which is very common after surgery on the clavicle. That can occur from the incision or from traction on the nerve during surgery. The location of each branch at the clavicle is variable. We really don't know how to save them, except when you see them, you save them. There is small safe area, medially and laterally, about 2 cm from the sternoclavicular joint and 2 cm from the AC joint. But in between them, the surgeon must be very careful to prevent transection of these branches. There is really no predictable safe zone between the medial and the lateral branches. These branches are approximately illustrated in this diagram. Thank you very much for listening. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.